Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Feeling a little bit under the weather, but talking about some very important stuff. Talking about dates. Talking about present dates, where we are actually on our Father's calendar. We're looking at months. We're somewhere around February 2021. And we're looking for, we're to the... Uh, last day of the year the 364th day now we know that it falls before March 20th March 20th is actually too late but now March the 19th maybe late-ish when you come around the calendar and so we went to scriptures and, and we found in Psalm 90 that it says to teach us to number our days that we might apply it might apply our hearts unto wisdom uh we found references in psalms 19 james uh 117 uh where it says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of lights with whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning we found in psalm 136 that the sun to rule by day for his mercy endureth forever and we found in psalm 136 the next verse it says the moon and the stars to rule by night for his mercy endureth forever um so we found in scripture that we had three witnesses that we needed to use to set the head of the year. It was the sun, the moon, and the stars. And so we ended up, uh, Mike brought up to me uh, Psalm 81.3. And in Psalm 81.3, it says, blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. And so when you drill into the definition of this, you find that that a new moon by implication is 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 month. Um, and it says to be uh, causatively to rebuild, to renew, repair. Um, apparently from fullness or full moon, that is its festival time appointed. Now, this created a lot of uh, uh, confusion for us because we, we had been told that you set the head of the year when the, the, the full moon is setting and, uh, and at the same time the sun is rising. Uh, and so we thought, well, the, the head of the year has to be the full moon. And so in order to clear up the controversy, we went to Enoch and Enoch is what settled the controversy for us. And it was reading in Enoch um, where we found certain certain scriptures that said things like this. So we, we find this in uh, in Enoch 16. Uh, it says, say in heaven, have you been secret things, however, have been manifested to you, yet you have known a reprobated mystery. So there's a mystery going on here in the stars. And what is the mystery? Well, if you if you read later in, in, in chapter 79 of Enoch, it says, their seed shall be backward in their prolific soil and everything done on the earth shall be subverted and disappear in its season. The rain shall be restrained and heaven shall stand still. And that's really important because it's it's that heaven standing still that is the basis of understanding how we found the gates in Enoch. And the gates in Enoch tell us when to set the, the year. And, and we set the year, now we know from Psalm 81, three, that we set the year on a new moon, not a full moon, but a new moon after the vernal equinox when the, when the, the sun sets first in Aries because it moves, we learned that these constellations, the 12 constellations are like a clock. They're like a clock of months and heaven stands still. So that, that sun setting in there is always going to tell us when the year is. And, and we learn in Enoch that every quarter is the same. It's 30 days, 30 days, 31 days, 30 days, 30 days, 31 days. Every quarter that, that adds up to the 364 days but we learned from Enoch that once you set the head of the year, and we set that by looking in Stellarium and finding exactly when the sun first set in uh, in the constellation uh, Aries for that for that fourth gate, moving from that third gate to the fourth gate is, is what set that in there. And Enoch tells us 177 days because we mark the beginning of the months by the lunar cycle, we mark the 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 year cycle by the sun so we're on this secret mission to correct it we're going to see if we can get everybody involved including you listening you know what i mean 
You just do what you do. Do what the Lord leads you to do. But this needs to be corrected for the entire world. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to come to regular old Google. And I'm going to type in Passover 2021. It's even down there. See that date? Now it looks like a harmless date. In some of my older videos, you'll see that I actually used that date to declare when the Passover would fall. The problem with that date is you have to subtract 14 days. And so you go March 27th minus 14. You can do that right here on this date calculator. March the 27th. And we'll say minus 14 days. That says that the new moon should have failed sometime on or around March the 13th. And the purpose of the spring equinox is to calibrate that new calendar year. And the result is a 364 day calendar year every year upon the spring equinox. For those who don't understand, the calendar year is 364 days. And the following are all the mentions of the year being 364 days only or exactly and completed in 364 days. So there are five locations in the Book of Enoch, one, two, three, four, five, all found in First Enoch, that the year is 364 days exactly. There are two locations of a 364 day mention in Jubilees chapter six, right here and right here. And then lastly, I found two locations in the Dead Sea Scrolls, which also state that the year is 364 days, right here in the Genesis Apocryphon and in the Secretarian calendar, where it talks about the year's complete 364 days. If the version of the Enoch calendar you use does not produce a 364 day year every year and also accounts for the spring equinox, which is the 365th day of the solar cycle and the leap day that happens every fourth year, then your calendar version is wrong and incorrect. When we talk about the first day of spring, it's March. So if spring doesn't start till March the 20th, but you're talking about a new moon that fell on March the 13th. Did that new moon fall in last year or this year? Those who believe that the date must be set up on the equinox said that that would have been last year. So there is the big debate. You know, is that March the 13th last year or this year? Because if it's last year, meaning that it was a 13th month, then of course the Passover date would be different. Okay, according to the most prominent calendar of the Jews, which is the Torah calendar, this day, March 14th, 2021, would be the first day of Nisan. As we see, the sun is in the Pisces, in the left-behind fish, as a matter of fact, and you can barely see, there's the new moon, the first sliver of the moon, at sunset. Now, what we have discovered and believe is that the new moon in Aries and Spica, which is the star previously known as Abib, should be on the horizon. And we see as the moon goes completely under the horizon, Spica or Abib is still not prevalent and until there. And even if we go a full another day, and here comes the sunset, calling this new moon, which is obviously the second day of new moon, even with that, Spica or Abib is still under the horizon, even until the moon sets, and there we see Spica. So it is possible that this is the true first day, but I, I think against it. Let's go further and examine this. Let's go to the 14th day of the first month, which should be Passover. So this is what they would say is dawn on the eve of Passover. Sun is rising with the full moon setting on March 27th. And as we carry this out, as the sun sets on Passover, we should see the lamb going into the grave and the moon should be rising in Libra, the scales, but the moon's way up here. And so this whole scenario just does not play out at all. Okay, let's go further. 
Okay, so here we are back at what they say is Nissan 1, and the sun is in Pisces, and there's the new moon. Now let's go all 30 days of this month and see if we testify of the Lamb. There you see the moon come back around to the new moon, and the sun is still not in the Lamb. Now, is it possible that we're wrong on this, that God really wants the sun to testify of the Pisces and the Lamb is visible on the horizon? It's possible. It's possible that this is truly the start of the second month, but I think against it. And further, here we are back at what they say is Nissan 1, March 14th. And let's go six months forward to the end of the sixth month and to the first day of the seventh month. So, one, so that was one, and this would be two, three, four, five, six, seven, adjust the moon back to a new moon. So what they will say is the Feast of Trumpets, the first day of the seventh month, is September 8th. Now, as you look closer, the sun is at the foot of Leo, thoroughly in the constellation of Leo, N not even in the constellation of the Virgin, which is a representation of the seventh month. So she has the ability to adjust through two months, but with the sun, this supposedly the first day, then it doesn't even get into the beginning of Virgo until approximately the seventh or the tenth day. So let's go a little further. What if we take this the rest of the way to the rest of the year? Okay. So first day of the seventh month, eighth month, ninth month, tenth month, eleventh month, twelfth month. Adjust the moon back to a new moon. Here we are, twelfth month in Capricornus. So they would say next year that March 4th is the first day. So we're still in Aquarius. Nowhere near Pisces. See how we just keep moving back? There has to be an adjustment. I'm just saying we adjust this year, not next. So they would add, they will add a 13th month. And there, they are getting closer. All right. And this is what I predict is the true first month. You'll see the sun and the new moon in Aries. And Abib is clearly on the horizon. Now, if we go 14 days from this, this is April 13th, so 14 days brings us to April 27th, 26th and 27th. So first of all, at sunset on the 26th, the sun is in Aries and the new moon, or the full moon, I'm sorry, the full moon is at Virgo. And this is Passover dawn and Passover evening. And as the lamb goes into the grave, on Passover, turning into the 15th day when he was buried, this, the moon comes up in the scales. Now, the stars of the scales, two of the stars, uh, one of them is the price paid sufficient and the price not sufficient. So when Jesus went into the grave as the lamb going into the grave, the moon testified as the price paid was sufficient. When you use the March beginning, the moon is nowhere near testifying of this. But if you find the, the proper start of the first year, in the proper Passover, then every single year, when on the 14th night going into the 15th, because remember the Jews uh, were instructed to start the day at sunset, not sunrise, but sunset, would start the new day. So the 14th going into the grave would be the 15th, and that's when he was buried. That's when he was put into the grave. And immediately on the other side of the horizon, the full moon rises in the scales. Then on the next day in the grave, there's a full another day. This would represent the second day in the grave, and what comes up is the moon in the claw of the scorpion. And remember, Jesus went down to get the keys of hell and death and to, to preach to those in the Netherlands and, and to bring some up. Then, on the third day in the grave, Lamb goes in and the moon testifies of the champion coming out of the grave with the snake, the serpent, by the neck and by the tail. He has won. This is victory. And then it continues on to the last day of unleavened bread. 
in the witch, the moon testifies, and Capricornus, which is life, the fish part, coming from death of the goat. Every single year. Now, if you use what they are saying on the Torah calendar, March 14th, this doesn't play out. So that's the object. We're going to change this. We're incorporating everybody's help to change this. This is the first. This is video one. We need a password. Well, we need an operation. What is this called? Operation Mutt. Some of the stuff we thought of so far was uh, something like a switch. Switch. Oh, Mission Impossible. Like we were going to switch out the calendars. And uh, nobody was going to know. But with some other code names as well. We need to think about the code names and some giveaways. We may do something like the most likes on the comment, which includes the code name with when. Starts here, 4th, 5th, 6th, 6th, 5th, 4th, 3rd, 2nd, 1st, 1st, 2nd, 3rd. It's 12 months, right? And comes back here. And so that is your... That is your um, that is your 364 day count. But remember, well, what I'm gonna be focusing on here, remember it said to start this out that the requirement for the year was that it entered into the fourth the fourth portal, the fourth gate. So the equinox has to have happened for it to be the beginning of the months. So 12 months of the year and it starts back again at the fourth portal. This is why we will be using the spring equinox, the sun enters the fourth portal as a prereq prerequisite for the first new moon of the year to be valid. No need to rely on barley being ripe or anything else man puts his hand to. Although we have technology today that makes viewing these signs in the heavens easy, even in ancient times, they knew exactly when the sun entered the fourth gate, the equinox. Yes, we have sun. I mean, we can do it today. We have sundials and uh, all those kind of things. So, uh, so they knew exactly, I, I believe they knew a lot more about the sun, moon, and stars than we have now. It's a, it's a lost uh, understanding. It's a lost wisdom uh, at this point. So they knew exactly when the sun entered the fourth gate, the equinox, alongside much more wisdom about the heavens that we have utterly lost over time. Point being, they would have no issues using the method I mentioned a few moments ago. So the new moon must be after the spring equinox. The sun enters the fourth portal. portal. Otherwise, another month must be added to capture catch up to enter any of this that we're talking about just comment down below like we said the the goal is to correct the calendar it's where when you say uh, Passover it doesn't give you this date the reason why it does is because the calendar is fixed we'll look at that and then we'll close this out with that let me just read here on Google when I typed in a uh, Jewish fixed calendar. It says the fixed calendar was a great benefit to Jews of his and subsequent generations. The Jewish calendar is lunisolar. That is, its months are synchronized with the phases of the moon, but its average year length approximates the mean length of a solar year. This is coming from Wikipedia and it's talking about Hillel II. He was the president of the Sanhedrin at during the councils there in uh, Rome, during the Roman councils. I can't remember which one it was exactly, but the one in which they declared that the Sabbath day would be on Saturday. That was this Hillel guy. He's the one who, who, is now responsible for the Jewish people celebrating Sabbath day on Saturday. He is the one that set the Sabbath and he fixed the calendar. At least he was the first person to attempt to fix it. It actually didn't get fixed during this council. But the thing is, they had the discussion then. So he gets a lot of credit for the actual um, um, uh, fixing of the calendar. The thing about the, the current way that they do stuff is that they have um, they have predictions opposed to um, going out and viewing the stars, the moon, the sun like they're supposed to. They've actually have predictions and calculations. They do it by paper. They do it by pencil and paper is what, what this is trying to say. 
He says the calendar did not reach its exact form until at least the years 924 through 922 or 922 through 924. So what this is saying is that even though Halal came up with the idea, they continued to do it until the year 924 is when they actually went onto the fixed calendar. Um, the way on the cycle that it is now didn't actually take effect until 924. That's important um, when we look back to see how far we are off and, and calculate, you know, how many how many days were they off, you know, seeing, OK, well, what day were they pointing at before they actually got off? I use this one in the, um, the council with Halal there, too. Um, and we know it's somewhere between the two. But anyway, but it says only attributed the establishment of the 19 year cycle. This 19 year cycle is the way the predictions are made. This is the way the calendar, the Jewish calendar works. I just found this out that the Jewish calendar works by these calculations that these two individuals came up with. Um, Halal and then whoever was doing this in, in 924. The way it works is that you um, you look 19 years ahead or 19 years behind you and you see what they did in that year and that's what you do in this year that's simply how it works every 19 years you you expect in the same calendar um expecting the calendar to look the exact same way and so for since 924 that's the way the the hebrew church has done it and um that's what our calendar that's why it's off that's, that's what's wrong with it that's where they broke it at so there you have it, folks. The Hebrew calendar is not being calculated according to the scripture since 922 AD. By 924 AD, the Hebrew calendar was officially uh, changed over to something other than a scriptural calendar. We And it's being done, you know, in accordance to, you know, these documents that we see uh, cited in here. Okay, so in summary, let's see how all of this works. Now, we first have to understand that we're talking about two different kinds of years here. We're talking about the solar year and the sacred year. The way the solar year works is that the vernal equinox is actually the 364th day of the year. And the very next day is the first day of spring. That is when the sun will enter what's known as the fourth gate or the fourth portal. Then we'll count 30 days before the sun enters the fifth portal and another 30 days before it enters the sixth portal. And the next month would have also 31 days in it. But that 31st day, which falls around the summer solstice, would be a day of remembrance that is the first of the four days that makes up the 364 day year and then we'll keep progressing around the calendar as such 30 days then 30 days then 31 days until you have another day of remembrance then 30 30 and 31 days which will fall around the winter solstice and then 30, 30 and 31 days, which will bring us back to the spring equinox, the 364th day and the last day of the solar year. That's how the calendar is calibrated. Now, when it comes to the sacred year or that year in which we determine that the festival days, it is only after that calibration day. After the vernal equinox, do we start looking for the new moon to fall? The first new moon after the vernal equinox will be the first month and the first day of the sacred year. And from there, we'll start looking for the feast days like Passover and unleavened bread. And we'll keep up with those holy convocations all year long until we get around to the 12th month and after that 12th month when that new moon falls the question then becomes does that new moon fall before the vernal equinox or after the vernal equinox if it falls after the vernal equinox then we know that we will be in the new sacred year the month Nisan or Abib but 
if that new moon falls before the vernal equinox, then we know that we have a 13th month in that year. And that new moon that just fell before the vernal equinox will be the first day of that 13th month. And the month after that will be the month Abib or Nisan. All right, so I'm starting to ramble on a little bit. Let's sign up. You know what I mean? In your own way. We're going to find out a way to uh, turn on the links. Right now, any links you put on the channel will block, get your comment blocked. So do it without putting a link on there to, uh, until we get that changed. Y'all can remind me to change it. Um, but uh, all right, we out.